Hello everyone and welcome back to another video concerning the ZD Browser Stack. Today we're not only going to discuss browser, but we're going to blend in some other ZD concepts, specifically app embedding concepts. And we're going to be using the ZD SDK for Node.js. The diagram you see on your screen is one we've used before, and typically it entails running some kind of web application server behind a ZD router. The traffic comes in over the ZD network, hits the router, and the router terminates that traffic onto web application server. If I bring up the diagram on the right, what if you wanted to eliminate the routers? What if you wanted ZD embedded directly into the application? What would that look like? In this case, the example we're using is the ZD admin console, or what we affectionately call the ZAC. That application, uh, which you'll see in a moment, is based on Node.js and Express.js. And we have embedded the ZD SDK for Node.js directly into the ZAC, so that it now has the capability to host a service on the ZD network and listen for connections coming over the ZD network and we'll be able to serve HTTP traffic out, out, of the, out of the application. And the demonstration that we will be using, uh, we'll be uh, using uh, up on the top green section, we'll be using all the same uh, IDP of Auth0. Uh, the browser will start uh, with uh, that type of authentication. We'll talk to the controller to get authenticated onto the ZD network will create all of our uh, ephemeral certs and then do a mutual TLS to an edge router, which will then speak directly to the ZAC, which is listening for incoming ZD connections. The typical way of starting ZAC involves exposing and listening on a TCP port. If I do an NPM start, you can see it's listening on port 1408. If we get into a browser and hit the ZAC at that port, log in. This is the ZAC uh, talking to the controller on my local network. Now, opening ports to the internet is something we'd like to avoid for security purposes. This is not the zero trust way of thinking. So how can we provide remote access to the ZAC without actually opening a port? And the answer, of course, is we zedify the ZAC. The zedification of the ZAC basically means we teach it to host its own service, and then we teach the ZAC to listen for ZD connections to that service. And of course, we're going to do all of this service hosting by embedding the ZD Node.js SDK into the ZAC application. All of the details surrounding how this app embedding is done will be documented in an upcoming blog article that I will post on openzd.io. So I recommend you go there and subscribe to our newsletter so you'll be notified when that article is published. But briefly, until the blog article comes out, I wanted to show you just a couple of things that were made, uh, code changes. Uh, one is uh, the application now has an optional dependency on the Node.js SDK itself. And you can see here on line 32 and it's in the surrounding code, this is where we do a dynamic load of the, of the ZD SDK for Node.js. Down around line 49, you'll see that if the environment variables for the identity file and the service name have been defined, that we're going to go ahead and do the ZD initialization. We're going to pull in that identity file and we're going to get ourselves onto the ZD network. Here on line 85, you can see that we are instantiating Express and wrapping it with ZD. We're doing a transparent wrap so that all of the rest of the application, you can see app use, uh, the, the, the various REST routing calls and uh, all the normal listening mechanisms that, you're, uh, that you know and love in an Express app, they remain unchanged. Uh, this is our way of thinking uh, on the OpenZD project. We want the friction for ZDifications to be as low as possible. And for an ExpressJS developer, uh, a couple of lines of code is basically all you need to add. All the rest again, the, the rest calls and the routing and all of the, the middleware that is Express remains completely unchanged, up to and including even the listen call itself. And you can see in my comments here mentioned that if you are running in a ZDified mode, the port number uh, under the covers 
the ZD intercepts will ignore it. And you'll see that before we were talking, uh, before the, the console put out, you know, what port we we're listening on. Uh, now we're going to talk about a different service name. So let's go ahead and start the app in a ZD5 way. Before we said in npm start, this time we're going to run a, a script in the package JSON that I called ZDefied, which is just a convenience mechanism to define a couple of environment variables that I just showed you. This time the console chatter is a little bit more verbose. I have uh, some ZD uh, debugging flags enabled so you can see what's going on. Um, but the, the key bits are you can see it talking to different edge routers as it comes up and it has successfully bound to a service on the ZD network that I have named test service and the app itself is acknowledging that, yep, here I am, I'm up and I'm running and I'm listening to uh, incoming connections on that particular service name. And again, back uh, to this diagram, instead of going directly to the ZAC, we first hit the ZD HTTP agent. We do the authentication with the IDP. We take that back through, we give it to uh, the browser and we inject the ZD browser runtime, which negotiates with the controller to get certificates and, and sessions to get on the ZD network. And then we come across, hit an edge router and then go directly to the ZAC. So let's run that process. Browsercurt.zd.netfounder.io is my internal name for my local HTTP agent. I'm going to log in to the IDP using a federated Google auth. I'm going to come in as myself. And here we are. The Zach has come up. And just like you saw in the uh, the non zedified way, we, we are logged in. The, the map is not showing up right now because I have a problem in my ZD browser runtime where some cores issues are preventing the OpenStreetMap uh, chiclets from, from drawing the, 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 the map that you've seen previously. But everything else works uh, status quo. If we go ahead and try to bring up the identities, you can see those come up. The Node Express app is showing that it's um, actually edge router con connected. This Node Express app is the identity of the ZAC itself. Uh, we're also obviously talking to the HTTP agent, so it's there. Services will bring those up. Test service is uh, the service that is uh, what we're hosting here. And if we looked at if we looked at the terminators. You can see that this one here that says hosted, that is indeed the Zach itself. Uh, that particular terminator will come in or out depending on whether the Zach is up or down. If I was to open up the Chrome DevTools and watch some of the console chatter, you can see that indeed there's a bunch of work being handled under the covers by the ZD browser runtime and its service worker proving that, yes, we are injected into the app and intercepting things as they would normally go uh, over uh, pure internet. We're, we're intercepting them and pushing them over the ZD network. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching. We do encourage you to uh, ask us any questions, either post them as comments on this video or over on our discourse uh, site. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.